welcome 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 so today's video we are going to look at horizontal and vertical components so imagine you get a velocity uh, or initial velocity and that's projected at an angle above the horizontal i mean equally you can do it below the horizontal doesn't really matter so you have a horizontal you have a initial velocity u meters per second and then this at an angle of theta now what we can do is we can split this up basically into its horizontal and vertical components and essentially it's all about kind of resolving them horizontal and vertically so just drawing this a little bit better so imagine this one is u that's the initial velocity then i'm going to call this u y and u x just to kind of define the horizontal and the vertical components and what we're going to do from here is just essentially think of this as being a bit of a triangle i mean you know looking at there but that would mean that this side on the right so here is the same as this side isn't it so what i'm effectively looking at is i've got a right angled triangle haven't i where that's theta that's u this would be u y this would be u x and i can use then the idea of trigonometry to find these so if i'm looking at u y for example that's the one i want to find well let's think of uh, sine so sine theta is opposite ui over hypotenuse so u so you can see then that ui that vertical component will be u sine theta equally i can do the same with cos theta to find that u x so cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse so ux when i rearrange will be u cos theta and that is then basically how i split this um, initial velocity at an angle of the horizontal into its horizontal and vertical components so uh, the horizontal will be u cos theta and that vertical u sine theta okay hopefully that's quite straightforward now let's have a little look at an example where we can use it in practice so here we've got a particle projected from a point on a horizontal plane with an initial velocity of 35 degrees and an angle 30 degrees above the horizontal so you imagine here's our horizontal plane uh, 30 degrees above something like that so this is theta but in our case we've got the angles 30 degrees this is our u or 35 meters per second and what we want to do is express this in the terms of i and j where basically i and j are unit vectors in the horizontal and vertical directions so that's what we're trying to find so thinking this way so this vertical one here would be u y and the horizontal component would be u x and that is what i'm trying to find get rid of a bit of that so u x now as we've seen is u cos theta it's not difficult to use or remember um, if you are doing this for the first time though just write write these things down as you're doing it you'll start to remember it a lot easier um, when i did any of the mechanics especially like you know m1 and, and m2 you know the easiest way to remember off than is you know that's cos with the angle that you've got and sine is essentially 90 minus the angle you've got Think about it just like that it makes it quite easy but like i said however you want to remember it or writing it down each time so that it forces your memory that is what you need to do for these 
So here we've got 35 cos 30, and then popping that into the calculator, we get 30.3 meters per second, and this is the three significant figures. Now with the y direction, this is obviously u sine theta. So 35 sine, I'm going to write theta again then, 35 sine 30, nice easy one, sine 30 is a half, isn't it? So half 35, 17.5, exactly. Now we're expected to write it in terms of i and j. So I would just say u for that initial velocity. I usually put vectors in brackets. So our horizontal is 30.3 i plus 17.5 j. And then the meters per second outside. So the bracket is just for the actual velocity, um, just to distinguish it. Sometimes you will see, you know, little lines under your I and J. Um, whatever you've been taught, you know, wherever you're comfortable with, just stick with how you write these vectors. It's totally up to you at this point. Hopefully first one, nice and easy. Let's have a look at another example. Now, in this example, we've been given the vector instead. And we're basically doing the reverse. So we've got 5i7j. So you think of your little sketch. Uh, so 7j and 5i there. And of course, this u is going to be in between them. Now, obviously, it makes way more sense to write this or draw this as a triangle. So we've got theta here, we can sometimes use alpha, you'll see. So that's five and that is seven, and this one's u. So now it's just simple Pythagoras. u squared is five squared plus seven squared, which is 74, so u is the square root of 74. Now you could write this as a decimal, for example, what I'm putting in brackets here. But I'd say generally it's, and you know, unless the question says, leave it as its square root. It's just easier that way. Now we need to find the angle. So that's going to be tan. Um, obviously, we could use the value we've just worked, this u. And we can use sine or cos. But it makes far more sense to use the values you've given rather than one you've just worked out. So tan theta will be opposite over adjacent. And that should give us 54.5 degrees. Again, to three significant figures. So very straightforward, whichever way around you're doing. And that's all that's going to be in this video. Um, the next one is when we start to bring this together into actual questions so this one just a few just three quick short questions uh, like these examples for you to practice just go one way the other way and then another one so yeah just nice and short and don't forget the answers are at the end of the video as always if you have found it useful don't forget please you know give me a like subscribe if you haven't already and comment down the below i do get i do try my best to get to you know every comment um i'm a little bit behind but i am working my way through trying to reply to everyone as quick as i can so please just you know bear with me there